the Bible. In the beginning... But Abraham... Moses looked back at those who followed him. For unto you is born a Savior. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. Hello, friends. Welcome to Bible Broadcasts, vintage stories and hymns from the golden age of radio. I'm John Henderson. Join me for an in-depth look at the life of Christ as heard over the airwaves of the 20th century. Today, the story of Jesus, part 34, including the woes to the Pharisees. It comes from an old-time radio broadcast based on Matthew 21 and 22, Luke 19 and 20, and Mark 11 and 12. And the opening Old Testament quote is from Isaiah 28. But before we get to our story, open your hymnal to number 261, Wonderful Words of Life, from a March 1949 broadcast. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echoes the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. And now, today's story. The Last Day in the Temple. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, who rule over my people that is in Jerusalem. For you have said, we have entered into a league with death, and we have made a covenant with hell. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come upon us, for we have placed our hope in lies, and by falsehood we are protected. Now after the procession of palms, Jesus returned to Bethany with his disciples. But Judas lingered that he might meet with the leaders of the Jews who were determined to put Jesus to death. And the next morning, Jesus arose and took himself and his disciples to Jerusalem. And he was hungry. Master, there's a fig tree. Why not eat of its fruit? Oh. It has nothing but leaves. May no fruit ever come from thee henceforth forever. Look, the leaves fall from the tree. It's dead. How did it come to wither up immediately? Amen, I say to you. If you have faith and do not waver, not only will you do what I have done to the fig tree, but even if you shall say to this mountain, Arise, and hurl thyself into the sea, it shall be done. And all things, whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. And leaving the spot, Jesus went unto Jerusalem, and through the golden gate into the temple, and the outer court was filled with a great noise of those buying and selling and changing money and haggling over the prices of sacrifices. And when Jesus saw this, he was angry and walked swiftly among them. Change your 
of money, heifers Heifers and lambs for the sacrifice. What? Oh, oh, oh. Here, here, what is this? Is it not written? My house shall be called a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. It is Jesus of Nazareth! Hosanna to the Son of David! Hosanna! It is Jesus! Come, you who are blind and crippled, come and be cured! Jesus! Jesus, cure me of my blindness! Jesus, have mercy on me! Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David! Dost thou hear what these are saying? Yes. Have you never read? Out of the mouth of infants and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. Who gave thee authority to do these things? I will ask you one question. And if you will answer me this, I in turn will tell you in what authority I do these things. What is the question? Whence was the baptism of John? From heaven or from men? From heaven? Aye, from heaven. John was a prophet. Abner, come aside. What are we to do? If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the people, for all regard John as a prophet. Therefore it's best to say nothing. The master waits your answer, as do we. We do not know. Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. But what do you think? We tell you we do not know whether John was from heaven or from men. A man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go to work today in my vineyard. But he answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he regretted it and went. And he came to the other and spoke in the same manner. And this one answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the Father's will? The first. There is no doubt of it. Amen, I say to you. The publicans and harlots are entering the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of justice, and you did not believe him. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. Whereas you, seeing it, did not even repent afterwards that you might believe him. Hear another parable. There was a man, a householder, who planted a vineyard and put a hedge about it and dug a wine vat in it and built a tower. Then he led it out to the vine dressers and went abroad. But when the fruit season drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers to receive his fruits. And the vine dressers seized his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent another party of servants, more numerous than the first. And they did the same to these. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But the vine dressers, on seeing the son, said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and we shall have his inheritance. And so they seized him, cast him out of the vineyard, and killed him. When, therefore, the owner of the vineyard comes... What will he do to these vine dressers? He will utterly destroy these evil men. He will let out the vineyard to other vine dressers. Who will render to him the fruits in their seasons? Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord this has been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and will be given to a people yielding its fruits... And he who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. But upon whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Shouldn't we call the guard and have him taken? Too many here are for him. They would rise against us. But he is obviously using this parable against us. We bide our time and seize him when he's alone. Come, let us go. Where? The Herodians are in the city. We should hold counsel with them as how to best turn the crowds against him.
I tell you, Abner, we'll get no place attacking him for his preaching and telling the people his cures are from the devil. Then we shall play on their fears that Caesar may come and destroy the nation. We shall arrange it so that Pilate will have to act. And how will you go about it? We shall go to Jesus and ask this question. Is it lawful to pay tribute to Caesar? Well, since you pay tribute, he'll have to say yes. I, I don't see... Ah, you don't know him. He has professed to be greater than Abraham and Moses. And it was Moses who wrote, Thou mayst not make a man of another nation king who is not your brother. If he says yes, he goes against Moses. And if he says no, he goes against Caesar. And we will lose no time in getting that reply back to Pilate, who is now here for the feast. Let us go to him at once. He is where we left him, and is talking to the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who make a marriage feast for his son. And he sent his servants to call in those invited to the marriage feast, but they would not come. Again he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatlings are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it, and went off, one to his farm, and another to his business. And the rest laid hold of his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. But when the king heard of it, he was angry. And he sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. Then he said to his servants, The marriage feast indeed is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the crossroads and invite to the marriage feast whomever you shall find. And his servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. And the marriage feast was filled with guests. Now the king went in to see the guests, and he saw there a man who had not on a wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how didst thou come in here without a wedding garment? But he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him forth into the darkness outside, where there will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Master, Master, we know that thou art truthful, and that thou teachest the way of God in truth, and that thou carest naught for any man, for thou dost not regard the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what dost thou think? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Aye, why do you test the master? Show me the coin of tribute. Here, this denarius. Whose are this image and inscription? Caesar's. Render, therefore, to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Ah, then you go against Moses, who and said... And to God... The things that are God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Good, a wise answer. Well, Abner, the trap you set had no spring, did it? You Sadducees have not been of much help. We have better judgment than to test him with political questions. He refuses such bait, as you just learned. Rather than jeer at us, you'd better join us. Or you stand to lose the same as we if he proclaims himself king. We are with you, Abner. Now, I will propose a question. One that has never been solved. Then do so. Master! Master, Moses said, If a man die without having a son, his brother shall marry the widow and raise up issue to his brother. Now, there were among us seven brothers, and the first, after having married a wife, died, and having no issue, left his wife to his brother. In like manner, the second and the third, down to the seventh, and last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, therefore, of which of the seven will she be the wife? For they all had her. <laughs> you err. Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. 
For at the resurrection they will neither marry nor be given in marriage, but are as angels of God in heaven. But as to the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, and with thy whole soul, and with thy whole mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment, and the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. We get no place with him, Abner. What do you think of the Christ? What do you mean? Whose son is he? David's. Aye, David's. How do the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? For David himself says by the Holy Spirit, The Lord said of my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, till I make thy enemies the footstool of thy feet. What is the point of this quotation from the Psalms? David himself, therefore, calls him Lord. How, then, is he his son? Hear, hear! And a great multitude heard him gladly, and no man was able to answer him a word. Neither did anyone dare from that day forth ask him any more questions. And Jesus lifted up his voice and spoke to the crowds and to his disciples. The scribes and the Pharisees have sat on the chair of Moses. All things, therefore, that they command you, observe and do. But do not act according to their works, for they talk, but do nothing. And they bind together heavy and oppressive burdens, and lay them on men's shoulders, but not with one finger of their own do they choose to move them. This is untrue! You insult the rulers of the temple! Yes. Be silent! Let Jesus speak! In fact... All their works they do in order to be seen by men, for they widen their phylacteries and enlarge their tassels, and love the first places at suppers and the front seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplace, and to be called by men rabbi. But do not you be called rabbi, for one is your master, and all you are brothers. And call no one your father, for one is your father who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for only one is your master, the Christ. He who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut the kingdom of heaven against men, for you yourselves do not enter in, nor do you let those entering pass in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you traverse sea and land to make one convert, and when he has become one, you make him twofold more of a son of hell than yourselves. I can stand no more of this. Call the guards. No, no, no. Come away. Let him talk sounding his death chant. Woe to you blind guides who say, whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound. You blind fools, for which is greater, the gold or the temple which sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gift that is upon it, he is bound. Blind ones, 
for which is greater, the gift or the altar which sanctifies the gift. Therefore he who swears by the altar swears by it, and by all the things that are on it. And he who swears by the temple swears by it, and by him who dwells in it. And he who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God, and by him who sits upon it. Come, let us get away from the sound of his voice, or it will drive me mad. You'd best go. I'll stay and watch. Run to Caiaphas and tell him to come, that Jesus is turning the crowd against us. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you pay tithes on mint and anise and cumin, and have left undone the weightier matters of the law, right judgment, mercy, and faith. These things you ought to have done, while not leaving the others undone. Blind guides who strain out the net but swallow the camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but within they are full of robbery and uncleanness. How blind Pharisees clean first the inside of the cup and of the dish, that the outside too may be clean. Caiaphas, you must listen to this man. He invites death. First, he charges in among the money changers and upsets the tables and drives the people selling sacrifices away. Then he starts talking to the ignorant crowds, inciting them against us and the temple. Unless we act soon, there will be riots and bloodshed, and then Pilate will turn out his soldiers. Best not let the crowd see you. We can hear from behind this pillar. Hypocrites, because you are like whited sepulchres, which outwardly appear to men beautiful, but within are full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear just to men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Hear, hear it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, you who build the sepulchres of the prophets and adorn the tombs of the just and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been their accomplices in the blood of the prophets. Thus you are witnesses against yourselves that you are the sons of those who killed the prophets. You also fill up the measure of your fathers. Serpents! Brood of vipers, how are you to escape the judgment of hell? Abner, Caiaphas wait, sends wait. a word. I must hear what he's saying. Therefore, behold, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you will put to death and crucify. And some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from town to town. That upon you may come all the just blood that has been shed on the earth from the blood of Abel the just, unto the blood of Zacharias the son of Barachias, whom you killed between the temple and the altar. Amen, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Caiaphas says that you wait, are to wait. He is not finished. Jerusalem. Jerusalem, thou who killest the prophets and stonest those who are sent to thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen gathers her young under her wings? But thou wouldst not. Behold, your house is left to you, desolate. For I say to you, you shall not see me henceforth until you shall say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It is finished. Yes. Now what is the message from Caiaphas? You are to reach Judas and tell him the priests would like to continue the discussion of the other night. Tell him to come after dark. Very well. 
I'll attend to it. And Abner, they have decided on the price they will pay Judas. Yes. How much? Thirty pieces of silver. And Jesus, having spoken of these things, left the temple and went out to the treasury. And there he rested before going back to Bethany. And he saw the people who had come to put their money offerings into the box. Behold, the day of the Lord shall come, a cruel day and full of indignation and of wrath and fury, to lay the land desolate and to destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and their brightness shall not display their light. The sun shall be darkened in his rising, and the moon shall not shine with her light. Thank you for listening to Bible Broadcasts. Enjoy this week's closing hymns.
Sometimes our skies are cloudy and dreary. Sometimes our hearts are burdened with care. But we may know whatever may befall us. Jesus is always there. Never a burden that he doth not carry. Never a sorrow that he doth not share. Whether the days may be sunny. problems, bent with our toil and burdens we bear. Wonderful thought and deep consolation, Jesus is Next week on Bible Broadcasts. If anyone serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also shall my servant be. Take a look back in the archives to hear some of the episodes you may have missed. Thanks. Oh.